Hi, I'm Darlene and welcome to Super at 60. Today here in Virginia, it is absolutely freezing cold. Uh, the temperature says about 35, but uh, the way that wind is kicking around out there, I would not be surprised if it's more like 20 something. Anyway, freezing, freezing cold out there. Um, Brownie has been out, she's all taken care of. So you know what we're doing today? We are making chili soup. It's absolutely fantastic, you love it. And to go with it, we are making the most wonderful, crispy, chewy, salty, yeasty, bakery style bread that you will absolutely love. And you know what? If I can make it, you can make it. So join me in my kitchen right here. begin with three cups of flour in the bowl, one quarter teaspoon, this little guy right here, of yeast. And then we are gonna need one teaspoon right here of salt. Let's mix this up very gently. One other thing that we need in here is one and a half cups of very warm water. Nice and slow. Cover up all of your flour. This dough doesn't need any kneading. Yep, it's one of those. Y'all love those. And it will stay right in the bowl as it rises for about three hours. We're just gonna do this, stir it around, get it all incorporated together. And then we're gonna cover her up and just let it go. I'm gonna take my little shower cap, just gonna put it right around the bowl. See how nice it stretches just like that? It's just perfect. Really, I love it. I'm gonna let it sit for about three hours. And during that time, I'm going to go and make my chili. All right, my ground beef is in. Oops. And my uh, veggies are in. I'm using uh, one whole medium sized um, green pepper today and half, even half of a small onion because of the flavor. It's just so wonderful, I love it. So we're gonna let that cook up for a little bit. Uh, when I make just regular chilies, I like to leave my meat just like this, not super chopped up, not super fine. Um, a little bit of um, chunkiness to them, so you don't have to beat the light at, life out of them. But when I make soup, I like little tiny pieces. So I'm just gonna go to town here and make sure that my meat is as small as I can possibly get it. And my uh, veggies are cooking down just like this. Just keep doing it, keep doing it. Actually, you know, just like a regular chili and any kind of soup, you just do whatever you want to do. You can add whatever vegetables you like to add. You could have added red peppers, yellow peppers, uh, um, I added a red onion. We like red onions, but you could add a white onion, yellow onion. I mean, it really doesn't matter. You could put celery chopped up real fine in here if you wanted to. Any kind of veggie would be perfectly wonderful. But uh, chili soup, you will not be sorry if you make this. A lot of people like to have chili any time of the year, even the in the heat of the summer. Um, Hey, if it's good, why not? But I don't know when I when this day is like this, when it's absolutely bitter cold out there, the first thing I think of is chili soup. All right, I think we just about have this thing ready. All right, and while I'm over here at the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a few more things, and then we're going back over and we're gonna put this in the crock pot and it's gonna cook for a few hours today. I'll check on it, off and on. All right, a little bit of salt, always a little bit of salt for a good flavor, brings out flavor. And of course, a pinch of black pepper. And then I'm gonna add, um, oh, I see a piece of meat over here. I'm going to add, <clears throat> excuse me. This is um, a chili seasoning mix. 
There's, of course, chili in there. There's cumin in there. A um, couple, couple other things. And it's a packet. It's just a packet mix. And you can do that if you like. Or you can make your own chili mix. Just like uh, in my uh, taco beef uh, filling that I made in the uh, crock pot the other day. I made my own taco seasoning mix. And you can make your own chili seasoning mix as well. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle that in. One packet per one pound of ground beef. And that's what I'm using today. One pound. And I my ground beef is always uh, grass-fed, organic. I just prefer that. Not all the meat that I buy is, however. But this meat, I find, is, uh, well, first of all, it's delicious. And secondly, I don't think it's off the charts crazy expensive. So I kind of treat us to our ground beef being organic. You know, I'm not into buying organic everything. I buy whatever I can if it's, you know, reasonable. But sometimes it's just ridiculous. All right, we're going to take it back over to the crock pot now. And just let it cook all day. So my crock pot, I have all prepared, meaning I've already set it on high. Uh, I like to do that just to kind of get it prepared for everything that's going in here. And I do leave, usually, generally I, I leave things on high for, I don't know, maybe two hours or so till it gets nice and hot and bubbling. And then I turn it down to low and let it go for a few more hours. But because my meat is pre-cooked, uh, it doesn't need that. So I'm going to start it on high, get it up to, you know, a, a good, nice, hot um, temperature, and then come check it in about, I don't know, 45 minutes, and then turn it down to low because it won't have to go that long, um, like I said, because the meat is already cooked. So let's go ahead and start here with uh, a can of um, peeled tomatoes. You know, they're going to be the whole tomatoes. And I like those because they're so packed with flavor. I'm just going to go ahead and put them in first. Juice and all. Just be careful. You don't want to be wearing this. I guess just make sure the can is uh, away from you. You have a lot of nice tomato in there, so save that because we're using water in just a bit. And we will use this. All right, and I'm going to take my little uh, meat masher. And I'm just go ahead and mash up these tomatoes and get them as fine as I can right in the bottom of the crock pot. I just love this little crock pot. So casserole crock pot is what it's called. I got it at Aldi several years ago when I had them. You know, the Isle of Shame thing, we all know about that. <laughs> well, it happens to be my personal favorite aisle. I haven't seen anything just like really terrific there lately though. Nothing, actually. So I guess that's a good thing. My husband appreciates that. <laughs> All right, let's get it chopped up as best that we can. If you want to add a can of diced tomatoes instead, that's just fine. That's just fine. For the two pounds of ground beef that we're using, this can is a 14.1 ounce can of whole tomatoes. So, But again, I will stress to you, uh, it's a soup. You can really just do things your way. That's what makes this so wonderful. All right, look, we have this really nice tomato base here. Ready to go. Almost looks like a, a pizza sauce. That's what my pizza sauce kind of looks like. There's a little bit of chunkiness to it. Okay, and now I am going to add um, I should probably add this, I think. I'm going to put a little bit of chili sauce right into my chili. And it's really nice. It adds a little bit of sweetness because there's a little bit of sugar in there. Now, if you don't have chili sauce or you just don't want to use it, you can substitute this for uh, ketchup, okay? Just a little bit. That was about maybe two tablespoons, maybe. Again, keep in mind, we're dealing with a pound of ground beef here. If you were making this uh, for a great big crowd and you had two pounds of ground beef, you might want to double everything. And if that's still not enough, add another can of beans um, and a little bit more water and you'll be just fine. 
All right, so now I have about two cups of nice, warm, almost hot water, yeah, from the bathroom tap. And I'm gonna put in two beef bouillon cubes and just, whoops, give them a nice stir. Just like that. Why not use your bouillon cubes for this, for the beef? You're using beef, so. If you don't have bouillon cubes, can you use just regular water? You certainly can. It'll be just fine. There is gonna be so much flavor in this. You will love it. Believe me, I'm not gonna post anything on YouTube, any recipe, if it's not good. Why would I do that? I don't know, that seems silly. All right, so in this goes, as far as beans go, you can leave it beanless, if you like, or I liked, um, this um, mixed chili beans can that I get at uh, Walmart. And you throw in the whole everything, even the liquid. I see kidney beans in there, looks like maybe pinto beans. I'm not sure exactly what all is in here, but I know they're beans. And again, for one pound of ground beef, one can, probably about a 15 ounce can, will be just fine. Well, we're gonna add our meat mixture right over here. Very carefully, I'm just gonna scoop it in gently. Get out as much as you can, cause that's just all flavor. All right, that looks just beautiful. I may add, I'm gonna let it go for a little bit now, but I may, pretty sure I'm gonna have to come in later and add a little bit of uh, water, a little bit more water. I'm not gonna add any more bouillon, but just a little bit of regular water. I'm gonna let this cook now, put the top on, let it cook for about an eh, hour and a half. I will check on it, maybe an hour. I'll see how hot it's getting. And then like I said, I'll turn it down on low, let it go. And remember our bread is rising too. So everything's kind of working at the same time. It works out this combination, dinner combination here works out really nice. Okay, we're gonna put the top right on. Well, I will see you in a few hours then. <laughs>
going to preheat my oven now to 450. Yeah, we need it all the way to 450. And I have gone ahead and put my cast iron pot in there so it is nice and hot. Now we can go do our bread. put it right into a piece of parchment paper right in the middle because this is what we're going to transfer our bread in and out of the hot hot cast iron pot it can be a little sticky so go ahead and put some flour on your fingers and just start tucking it tucking it tucking it right under if you're making a little ball now i'm going to use this uh paper right here now to transfer into this sweet little basket, this little bowl. A lot of times you can use this kind of a bowl for, uh, I forget what it's called, sorry, for sourdough bread. But I'm just going to go ahead and put this right in here. I hear that our oven is ready. Sorry, I know that crinkle is really hard to listen to, so I'll do as little as possible. I'm just gonna let this sit for just a moment, just like this. It doesn't even need to be covered. We'll just push it right over to the side, just like that. That's kind of bright, huh? Okay, there, maybe you can see it better. All right, we are going to get our bread into the oven. Let me get that hot cast iron pan out. Ooh, and it's I've uh, been sitting in a 450 oven, 450 degrees, can you even imagine? Woo! All right, and it is heavy, so I'm gonna place it right here. Close the oven back up for one second. Oh, I'll just set it over here real quick. All right, when you're doing this, be very careful when you place this bread back in here because this thing is hot. Down and there it goes. Get your mitts back on. You have to have the right kind of mitts to handle 450 degree cast iron. Or don't do this bread. Or you'll be sorry. That's just a warning for me to you <laughs> who has burned her fingers more than once. All right, so now we're gonna put this right back in. Okay, for 30 minutes, and I'll set my timer. Okay, timer, 30 minutes. All right, we'll be back in 30 minutes. All right, the timer went off. It was in the oven for 30 minutes, just like this. I'm gonna take the uh, lid off and let's see what we gotta do here. Not too much, oh boy, it's hot. Okay, it's hot, oh look. That is one sweet, sweet little loaf of bread. Okay, so now I am going to, you can touch the paper, it's not hot. Take this out. I'm gonna put this guy right back, right back into the oven, just like this, for just about 10 minutes. We just want the top to get nice and browned. Let's check out the bottom. Oh, look how beautiful that is already. That's just what you want to hear. I'm excited. Oh, sweet little loaf. I love these things. All right, back in it goes. Do not change the temperature. Nothing. Just put it right back in. I cannot believe that we are finally finished. 
Uh, what a fun day. Uh, from morning till night, I just had such a good time preparing this meal. Um, the soup looks fantastic and this bread is absolutely adorable. And I cannot wait to just cut into it. You know how it is when you cut it into that first slice and it's crispy and it's crunchy and It's beautiful. It's soft and lovely and crunchy all at the same time. It's beautiful. Really a beautiful loaf of bread. Just enough little artisan look to it of the little pinch of flour that we had on it. It's really, really nice. Um, I am going to go ahead and slice it up. And then I am going to uh, ladle out the soup because it's actually dinner time for Lou and I. Look how beautiful. Oh, look how beautiful is that? And you can make this. I know my husband wants to taste it too. I'll make sure. I'll make sure I'll share it with him for, for his soup tonight. Whoops, throwing butter all over the place. All right, oh goodness gracious. You don't see me. <laughs> oh. I think they call this bread heaven. All right, so here we go. Here's our delicious soup. We'll make this one up for Lou. And there is his dinner. And I will make him a wonderful piece of bread just like this. All right. Well, our day is done here at Super at 60. I want to thank you so much for joining me once again. Um, we made that delicious, delicious chili soup. I hope that you'll try it. The bread, well, bread is so good. <laughs> it's just so, so wonderful. Uh, I know that you will enjoy this recipe. It's absolutely delicious and so easy. Just so unbelievably easy. That's what I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed our little, uh, afternoon of going out and looking at the backyard. I love the dead of winter. Sometimes it's just a, such a beautiful, peaceful time where everything just kind of sleeps. I hope to see you soon in my kitchen on Super at 60. Bye now.